Mr. McCoy here with part three of the old Willis place. As you recall, Diana said, tonight we'll borrow a book from Lissa. She has a whole shelf full of them. Surely she won't miss one or two. I want a story right now, Georgie Bumble. Tell me the one about us. It always makes you cry. Tell it anyway. I sighed and stretched out on my back beside him. Once there was a little boy named Georgie, I began. He had a big sister named Diana. They lived in a little house on a big farm with their mother and father. It wasn't their farm. It belonged to Mr. and Mrs. Willis, but Georgie and Diana could play anywhere they wanted, inside and outside. Upstairs and downstairs, Georgie added. Diana and Georgie were so happy. Most of the time. I said. All of the time, Georgie insisted. They rode bicycles, their very own bicycles, and they had lots of books to read. They had warm beds and food, delicious food, ice cream, candy, cake, and cookies, all they could eat. Lulled by the rain into a dreamy state like Georgie's, I said. Devil's food cake was their favorite, and chocolate chip cookies still warm from the oven, all gooey and sweet. Mother read to them every night, and Daddy took them fishing in the pond. And Diana played the piano every single day. Georgie snuggled closer. Those were the best times ever. Except for Miss Lillian. I was sorry the moment the old woman's name popped out of my mouth. It hung in the air for a long moment. A dark cloud over our heads. A curse nothing could dispel. Georgie drew away from me and covered his ears. Stop, Diana! Don't tell that part. But you said, I've changed my mind. Throwing his covers back, Georgie got to his feet and dashed out into the rain. Georgie! I ran to the shed's door and peered after him, but he was already out of sight. Come back! I called. You'll get soaked! There was no answer, just the sound of the rain and the wind stripping the trees, filling the air with ragged yellow leaves. Georgie! I called again. Still no answer. He'd probably stay away all day, holed up in one of those, his secret hideouts. I stepped back from the sheets of water pouring off the roof. If I hadn't mentioned Miss Lily and my brother and I would still be telling tales about the old days, amusing ourselves while the rain fell and the wind blew. Now, Georgie was gone, and I was alone. To keep myself from thinking about the bad part, I rummaged through our pile of moldering belongings until I found Clematis. I made a snug nest of blankets for myself, not nearly as cozy as Lissa's soft, clean bed, and opened the book. Just inside the front cover, spidery handwriting proclaimed, This book belongs to me, Lillian Willis. Well, not anymore, I thought. It's mine now. As the wind murmured through the cracks in the shed's walls, I could almost hear my mother's voice reading to me the way she once did. It would be lovely to cuddle up beside her while Georgie sat nearby, building block towers and pretending not to listen. We'd have hot chocolate by the fire and slabs of devil's food cake. So warm, so cozy, rain falling outside, firelight glowing inside. Drowsy-eyed, I let the book drop to my side. Snuggling deeper under the covers, I drifted into dreams of happy days with Mother and Daddy. I slept most of the day, but Georgie didn't come back till after dark. Nero heard him before I did. He leapt from his place beside me, his ears pricked up, and ran to the door to welcome my brother. Where have you been? I asked him. Georgie flopped down on his pile of blankets, shaking off water like a dog. You should have come with me. I went to the trailer, and I... Did you see Lissa? I saw her and her father. He paused a second. And the police. Mr. Morrison, that's their last name. I heard the police say it. Called them about the bike. One cop said kids from town probably stole it, but the other said strange things happen here. He told them how none of the caretakers stay long, how some of them spread stories about ghosts and other weird stuff. Ooh, I moaned in a ghostly voice. Ooh. 
we laughed, knowing exactly who was to blame for the caretaker's abrupt departures. What did Lissa's father say? I asked. He just laughed, but Lissa told the police she's sure people are hiding in the woods. She feels them watching her. The police said that they, they were the same kids who stole the bike. He thinks they live in those houses across the highway. Was Lissa scared? Georgie shook his head. She seemed more mad than anything. If you ask me, she's kind of spoiled. You know, only child and all that. I bet she always gets her own way. I picked up Nero and rubbed his head with my chin. The cat purred, but I frowned. What did Georgie know about Lissa? He was a boy, after all. He didn't know anything about girls. Lissa was nice, I could tell. She'd be a good friend, if only... If only... If only... Police warned Lissa to stay close to the trailer and not go to Miss Lillian's house. Georgie went on. If Lissa and her father see anything suspicious, he wants them to call right away. I lay on my back with Nero on my chest, purring so loudly I could feel his whole body vibrating. I'm glad Mr. Morrison doesn't believe in ghosts, I said. It would be awful if he quit. He and Lissa are much more interesting than the grumpy old men who usually take the job. Georgie shrugged. He sure was mad about the bite. I'm mad about the bite, too. I said I was sorry. Georgie rubbed his hair dry with a blanket and took off his wet clothes and a pair of baggy pants that used to belong to Mr. Potter and a sweatshirt he found in the woods. Georgie looked smaller than ever. I got to my feet, tired of being indoors. Let's see what they're doing now. The night air was cold and thick with mist. The rain had stopped, but the trees were dripping and the ground was wet. We mucked through the woods and across the field. In the gloom, we saw a trailer's cheerful, lighted windows. Lissa and her father were in the living room playing checkers. Macduff lay beside Lissa his nose on his paws, sound asleep. We should borrow the checkers too, Georgie whispered. I'm tired of playing with stones and acorns. Just think, a real board instead of square scratched in the dirt. I put my finger to my lips. Hush, do you want to wake Macduff? We watched Mr. Morrison win the game by capturing Lissa's last king. Time for bed, kiddo, he said. Just wait till tomorrow night, Lissa smiled and kissed him good night. I'll beat you. We'll see about that. Her father got to his feet and turned off the light. Georgie and I sneaked around to Lissa's window and hopped up on the cinder block. She was already in bed reading. I squinted hard at the title. Lassie Come Home, one of my favorites. I longed to read it again. I'd beg Daddy to let me have a collie just like Lassie, a dog who would love me best of all and be loyal and true, but he'd said no. Miss Lillian wouldn't allow a dog on her property. It might frighten her cats. Georgie made a slight noise, and Lissa looked straight at the window. We ducked down. Be still, I whispered. She almost saw us. So suppose Lissa had seen Diana and Georgie. What do you think would happen? Share with your fellow listener. The next time I raised my head, Lissa was reading again. Finally, she yawned, closed the book, and laid it on the table beside her bed. When she turned off her light, Georgie nudged me. Should I sneak in and get the book now? I shook my head. Give her time to fall sound asleep. Let's see what her father's doing, Georgie suggested. His light's still on. We crept to the other side of the trailer. Where's Macduff? I whispered to Georgie. He climbed up on the cinder block ahead of me. In here, he whispered. Sure enough, there was Macduff, curled up in a dog nest as cozy as Lissa's bed. Mr. Morrison sat at his desk working on his computer. It was the first one we'd ever seen except in television ads. While we watched, words formed themselves into sentences and paragraphs on the screen. Magic, I thought. He must be working on his novel, I whispered. I wonder what it's about. We could borrow his computer and read it, Georgie grinned. I bet the novel's boring, but it would be fun to have a computer. I think you need electricity to make one work. Too bad, 
Georgie muttered. After Mr. Morrison quit for the night, we returned to Lissa's window. Georgie lifted the screen quietly. He got a very good alarm, much better than I had. Cautiously, I followed him inside. He could have taken the book by himself, but I wanted a closer look at Lissa's room. While Georgie waited impatiently, I examined her stuffed animals, her books, the pictures on the walls. I pointed to a photograph in a silver frame. Look, Georgie, I whispered. That must be her mother. She looks just like Lissa. Georgie picked up the photograph and studied it. I wonder what happened to her, I said. I think she died. Saddened by the thought, I shook my head. Maybe they got divorced. Lots of people do that now. Another useful bit I picked up watching TV. But Georgie's interest had been caught by something else. Bending over Lissa, he carefully lifted the teddy bear lying beside her head and cradled it in his arms. It's just like the bear Miss Lillian took away from me, he said. She said I stole Alfie, but Mrs. Willis gave him to me. Remember how I cried and cried? Just then, Lissa sighed in her sleep and rolled from her side to her back. Scared of waking her, I grabbed Lassie come home and headed for the window with Georgie right behind me. We must have made more noise than I thought because Macduff started barking before we crossed the yard. We heard Mr. Morrison yell at the dog to be quiet. Lissa called out from a room, and the outside light flooded the yard. Without waiting to see what would happen next, we fled into the woods. It wasn't until we were safely home that I noticed Georgie had brought the bear with him. He fell asleep that night, holding it as tightly as he'd once held Alfie. I hadn't seen him look so happy in a long time. You think it was a great idea for Diana and Georgie to sneak into Lissa's room and do what they did? Share your opinion with your fellow listener. The Diary of Lissa Morrison Dear Dee Dee, something even more scary has happened. While I was asleep last night, someone came in my room and stole Tedward and Lassie come home. Dad says I must be mistaken. I must for have forgotten where I put them, but I know Tedward was on my pillow. I sleep with him every night. My book was on the table beside my bed. When I woke up, they were both gone. I bet the same kids who stole my bike took my bear and my book. They have a lot of nerve to come into my room while I'm sleeping. They could have murdered me. How can I ever sleep in my bed again? I'll have to keep Macduff in my room to protect me. Oh, Dee Dee, I don't know what I'll do without Tedward. He's my most special toy, my favorite, the one I love best of all. My mother gave him to me when I was five years old, not long before she died. I've slept with him ever since. Now he's been kidnapped and I want him back. What do those kids want with a little brown bear? I love him so much. Dad says Tedward and my book will turn up, but I doubt it. I wonder what they'll steal next. I hope they take something that belongs to him, his computer, maybe, then he'll know how it felt. If only Dad would fix the lock on my window, but oh no, he's too busy working on his book to do anything like that. He won't even help me search for those kids. He says they're long gone, but he called the police and reported it just the same. If they dare to come back, I'll sick Macduff on them. He'll give them a bite they won't forget. Oh, Dee Dee, I wish you were real and could write back to me and tell me what you think. I feel like I'm talking to myself, going on and on, writing letters. Nobody will ever read. Well, that's all for now. I guess I'll take Macduff for a walk and keep my eyes peeled, as people say, which is a very weird expression when you think about it. Eyes peeled like grapes. Ugh. See you later. Your friend, Lissa. The next morning, Georgie and I made ourselves comfortable in our favorite tree, and I began reading Lassie Come Home to him. Nero climbed to a high branch and stretched himself along its length like a panther surveying his kingdom. He dozed lightly as cats do, swinging his tail from time to time to show that he was keeping an eye on us. 
first thing I noticed about Lissa's book was that the pictures were exactly the same as I remembered. There was Lassie sitting at the gate, waiting for her boy Joe, and the words were the same too. Everyone in Greenell Bridge knew Sam Caraclaw's Lassie. In fact, you might say that she was the best known dog in the village, and for three reasons. I leaned against the tree's rough bark and smiled at Georgie. Isn't that a great beginning? Go on, Georgie said. What happens next? What are the three reasons? I read the first three chapters. I'd meant to stop after one to make the book last longer, but Georgie insisted I keep going. Like me, he was furious when Sam Caraclaw sold Lassie and even more furious when the dog was mistreated by Hines, the evil kennel man. He finally agreed to let me stop for the day when it seemed Lassie was about to escape from the kennel and meet Joe at school, as she always did. Now Joe will get to keep Lassie, Georgie said with confidence. The Duke will see that Lassie loves Joe too much to take her away from him, and he'll fire Hines. Of course, Georgie was wrong. It wouldn't be much of a story if everyone got to be happy right away. Do you agree that it wouldn't be much of a story if everyone got to be happy right away? Share what you think with your fellow listener. And now a few lines more of the old Willis place. I hid Lissa's book in a special hole in the tree trunk where we kept other things, the TV remote plus a jackknife and a ball of string we'd also borrowed from Mr. Potter, and a cigarette lighter and a flashlight we'd borrowed from Mr. Alessandro. I suppose that sounds bad, but they were all things we thought we might need someday. It wasn't as if we had a choice. What are people to do if they have no money? With Nero at our heels, as faithful as a dog, we made our way through the fields and woods to the trailer. Even Georgie couldn't stay away. We'll find out what happens as the old Willis place continues. Mm -hmm.